Welcome to DC to be Revolution, helping chiropractic students think big in order to live large. I'm your host, Noah Bowles, and today I'm here with Dr. Stephanie Halloran. She's a chiropractic resident at the Connecticut VA Healthcare System in West Haven, Connecticut. And she was also the Student American Chiropractic Association Membership Committee Chair and was a chiropractic intern at the Richard L. Rudebush VA in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, uh, Dr. Halloran, thanks so much for being here. Of course, I'm happy to join you. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, so I'd, I'd love if you take us back a little bit and kind of talk to um, students and chiropractors about the origin story of uh, where you are now working at the uh, Veterans Affairs um, Center. Yeah, of course. So um, I was first exposed to uh, the opportunity to do the residency in 2014. Um, I was in Roanoke, Virginia at the Foot Levelers facility attending the um, Student American Chiropractic Association Leadership Conference. Uh, it was the first one I had attended. I had flown from Portland all the way to Virginia. Um, and it just so happened that on the docket of speakers that year were all of the directors of the residency program. So that was the first year, 2014 to 2015, was the first year that they had the residency program. Um, it was in its first year of the pilot. Um, and they spoke of this amazing opportunity to basically do what medical professionals do and go into a year of training after you become a physician and um, learn under your attendings and rotate through all these other departments and participate in the scholarly work and basically become the best clinician you could be. And at that point, I was like, this, this is what I want to do. So I spent the next two and a half years um, trying to find out as much information as I could about the residency, about um, preceptorship opportunities within the VA that were affiliated with Western states, which is where I went to school. Um, and just, um, you know, really immersed myself in what it would take to become a chiropractic resident. Um, so 2014. October 2014 is when it all started. That's when you when your superpower started to to mature there. Um, so uh, you know you talked a little bit about some of the the preparation that you did. You know, to really trying to get uh, as much information as you could about the program. What of that preparation do you think was really vital, both for your selection and then also for the work that you're doing now and being successful and working in the VA environment? So a lot of the preparation that I did, I guess, like the um, questions that I asked were surrounding the information for the residency program that wasn't available, like the information about the different sites, um, what they look for in a candidate, what the each of the attendings, you know, were particularly good at. Um, that information is a lot more available now because of interviews like this. And um, uh, Dr. Stephen Heibrick, who's at the St. Louis facility as the resident, and um, Dr. Rachel Clark Moores, who's in LA, um, we've all kind of worked together with the ACA to do a blog series. So um, we've really worked this past year to get more information out so people don't have to do all the digging. Uh, but in regard to actually preparing to be in a residency, um, just your school education, really focusing on uh, proper diagnosis of spinal conditions, knowing how to differentially diagnose, know how to do a proper neuro exam, um, be at least aware of other professionals within the medical realm. So your pain medicine doctors, neurologists, um, how they may contribute to your management of the patient. Those are all very valuable things, not to know them very in depth, but at least be aware of those options. Um, other things that prepared me extremely well was my rotation within the VA um, in Indianapolis. So I did that my last three months of school. It was all that I was allowed to do uh, as a student. Some programs have longer time periods, some have less. Um, but I think that really gives you a taste for what the patient population is and what a typical day would be like. Um, they do say that once you've been in one VA, you've been in one VA. So they it, they are not always, you know, congruent across the board, but um, you, you get an idea for how things are set up. Um, so I think 
if there's anything that like specifically for students in preparing, um, that would be a huge step is to go and do, but take advantage of that VA uh, preceptor clerkship or however your school talks about it, because it's just, even if you decide not to do the residency, um, it's a great opportunity to learn in an actual real, very complicated um, population of people on how to handle those situations. I've had multiple patients who have had cancer. I've seen um, people with, you know, degenerative neurological conditions. I've seen people with triple A's. I've seen people who have um, hemiparesis because of stroke. So all these things that you are the big, bad, scary things when you're in school, they become less big, bad, and scary when you see them on a much more frequent basis than you would in private practice. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's yeah, a, I feel like that's a wonderful opportunity, opportunity for so many individuals who are interested in chiropractic. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but I wonder if you could go uh, more in depth on what a typical day looks like for you um, and kind of... Uh, especially focusing on um, the collaborative care aspect of things and really how you interface with other medical professionals. Yeah, so there's, it's hard to say there's a typical day because everything kind of varies. Um, for the most part, the general layout or the framework that we follow is I have my own patient grid um, on Mondays all day. I see consults in the morning and follow-ups in the afternoon. Friday mornings, I see follow-ups. Um, starting in April, we're actually adding a follow-up clinic to my Wednesday mornings. Um, and then Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, I'm up in the Newington Clinic, because um, I work primarily out of the West Haven Clinic. Um, and I'm seeing follow-ups up there within my own clinic. Um, every other Tuesday, then, is pretty much me going on rotation um, in other departments. And then, um, the other time is spent either on rotation, doing administrative work, or um, within one of my attendings clinics. So working with Dr. Lisi in the acupuncture clinic, um, working with Dr. Coolis in the chiropractic clinic, um, or just it, we're working with some of the students as well that rotate from University of Bridgeport. Um, with my rotations, um, I do primarily things that we would either receive referrals from or send referrals to. Um, so that would be physiatry, pain medicine, which is generally an anesthesiologist, neurologist, or physiatrist who has done an additional fellowship year in pain. So they're the ones who do um, all your interventional procedures. So uh, medial branch blocks, um, RFAs, uh, you know, SI joint injections, that kind of thing. Um, I've spent some time with neurology, neurosurgery. I just started a rotation with them. Uh, rheumatology, primary care. Uh, what else have I been to? Um, our interventional pain clinic. So I deal with like the health psychologists who do a lot of the cognitive behavioral training uh, or cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, so it's it's very it, it's very diverse in a lot of ways, but it all is applicable to what we're doing as providers as a whole. Um, in each department, what I do is a little bit differently. Uh, with neurosurgery, they had me taking consults and um, sitting down and discussing with the neurosurgeon based on what we observed in the consult and with the MRI, like, are they a surgical candidate or not? Um, which is amazing. I think I learned more about MRIs in 30 minutes than, uh, you know, probably, probably equal to as much as I learned through my, all my chiropractic career or schooling. Um, with physiatry, you're seeing joint injections. Um, so you do, and, and a lot of times they'll have you either do consults or you'll do, um, you'll just observe and then you'll do something at the end where you have some kind of almost a case conference discussion. Um, on my rotations, I've been able to spend time with uh, fellows from UConn, um, University of Connecticut. I've been able to spend time in West Haven with uh, Yale residents, so medical residents of Yale, from Yale who are, you know, in their first couple of years who may be rotating through primary care and I'm working right alongside them um, talking about cases and they'll let me if I'm in primary care and they have someone come in with musculoskeletal pain they'll go through what they need to go through and they're like okay why don't you you just examine the neck and let us know what you think so it's um it's a it's a very very unique and very rewarding experience to be able to um, not only work with the clinicians I work with because they're phenomenal human beings and phenomenal um, physicians in general, but to be able to then work with people who are training Yale 
medical doctors and they're letting you participate and you know tell the they value your opinion um it's really an outstanding uh, experience to be able to be part of that yeah so it really sounds like you know you had this vision in 2014 to be able to do this and it it sounds like it's really fulfilled or exceeded your expectations in terms of uh what you've been able to learn and how you've been able to grow most definitely yeah so that's really exciting so um if you know chiropractic students or even chiropractors for that matter kind of want to get involved in this program want to be a part of the program want to support the program what's the best way for them to do that so if um, students are interested in applying or being um, you know actually getting to be part of the program um, th like I said the preceptorships are really um, are a really good way to start that process uh, whether you end up getting a residency or not, and you want to eventually get into a uh, VA down the road because you see yourself in a hospital setting or another hospital setting, um, it's great training. It's a great uh, way to understand how the system, the hospital system works. Um, for doctors who want to support um, the VA or the program in general, um, that's kind of hard to say because it's it's a fairly well-established program now. Um, it's accredited and as of um a couple of years ago and we're going into our fifth year uh, we're finishing up the selection process for our applicant or for our residents that will be coming in in july um so i don't know if there's anything like on the outside that can necessarily be done to support the program except to promote it and encourage students to take advantage of those opportunities um one thing that people could do um especially within the educational settings is try to promote um, some kind of hospital rotation for your students. Because um, the reality is there's there are five residency locations with only one position at each location. So, you know, if we're getting how many students, per, you have 36 valedictorians per year on average. So even if every valedictorian applied, you are still have 31 who are not going to get residencies. Um, it's a very it's a very difficult position to get, and it's unfortunate that more people won't have the experience. But what could happen is, if you have some kind of rotation through um, a hospital where you can engage with other practitioners and learn more about an integrative setting, that would be very beneficial. So if any practitioners have access to that or have um, some kind of connection to get that implemented, um, I would encourage them to do that to um, help enhance students' education. Awesome, that's really great advice. And and one thing I, I didn't ask about that um, I know students would be interested in is what is the kind of percentage of job placement for somebody like you after you've completed this program? Is it um, you know relatively easy for you to then get a job in a hospital environment with this experience? I believe, um, and I would have to double check this, but I, I, I believe out of the 15 residents previously, 14 have been placed in either um, a private hospital, a VA, or some kind of academic um, setting. So um, here in Connecticut, we have uh, Dr. Kelsey Corcoran, and she is also a Western States grad. She did her residency at the Buffalo um, location and she's now doing a two-year medical informatics fellowship in affiliation with Yale. But she works in conjunction with the um, Connecticut VA system. Um, so th those are the type of opportunities that you may not be aware of, but they are possible. Um, as of right now, um, I don't know how this class or my class is projected to do, but um, it really, some of it depends on the availability of the jobs during the cycle. Um, but for the they have a very high success rate of getting people placed or at least getting them um, getting them placed within the first year after graduating from the program. Yeah, that's awesome. I know as students, we're all trying to figure out the best way to get an amazing job. So that that's a really high success rate. That's really exciting. Um, anything else that you feel like is really relevant to students that we didn't cover? I feel like we covered a lot of ground, but I just wanted to, you know, leave it open if there's anything I missed. Um. I don't know. I mean, I just really encourage people, students to challenge themselves. Um, it's very easy to sit back and um, 
you know, when you're looking at a patient say, oh, it's just mechanical low back pain. We're going to treat it this way. Like my treatment's not going to change, which I mean, that's a, it, it's easy to fall into that thought process, but really challenge yourself to try to do diagnostic tests or take a, a very thorough history so you can figure out, is it facet? Is it SI joint? Is it, you know, do they have a radiculopathy or not a radiculopathy? Do they have, um, you know, is it just myofascial pain? Do they possibly have stenosis? And knowing how to differentiate those, are you going to know definitively what it is? No, probably not. But if it comes down to it and they're not getting better, you'll know better where to refer them based on, you know, where their pain is. Um, so I really, I really encourage students to push themselves outside their comfort zone, challenge themselves, and try to have conversations that expand their knowledge outside of just what chiropractic can do and what the medical community can do for a patient altogether. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And you even mentioned it, like you're doing consults for the neurosurgeon and consults for the physiatrist. Like all of us take a history, you know, every medical professional, that skill of taking a history is really vital. And so if you develop that skill and you get good at that skill, it doesn't matter what kind of medical professional you are, you'll be better at your job. And they, and, and to like add on to that, like I've had these attendees who some of them are chiefs of their department tell me how, you know, I am the same level as a first year resident in their department or a second year resident, or I've had a couple physicians ask me if I've thought about going back to med school and working in their specific specialty. So we're very well respected and we get a very good education. We just have to apply it appropriately. Yeah. Well, hopefully this will motivate a lot of students to to apply their education appropriately, as you say, and to really push their limits and really um, get outside of their comfort zone and really help to grow the profession in new ways and new areas. Um, so thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your, your knowledge. Of course. I was happy to. Awesome. So this has been a production of dc to be Revolution, helping chiropractic students think big in order to live large. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, spread the word. I always appreciate that. And until next time, think big to live large.